All right, my Madden Rebuild Warriors, let's talk about week eight. Let's recap. Our New England Patriots on Thursday night football squeaked out a win here. Their defense is balling. Offense, not so much. Brian Robinson, not who we hope he'd be. Zeke Elliott is doing very well yardage-wise, but Brian Robinson did not do in his debut. We moved up Devontae Parker into the lineup. He did well. Hunter Henry, eight catches for 32 yards. Yikes. Uh, we did change playbooks for this. Trying to get the running game going. Hoping that if we got the running game going, that maybe, uh, you know, we'd uh, get some more production out of our offense. But that didn't happen. Defense. You got to watch this game. The defense made some uh, big plays late that were clutch. Including these two men right here. Mapu and Judon. Wasn't pretty for the Jaguars. And Trevor Lawrence. Yeah, our, our defense is balling, baby. Balling. Offense... I don't know what the opposite of ball on is, squaring, but uh, it ain't it. So we got to fix our offense because our defense is top notch for sure. Then our Cincinnati Bengals absolutely rolling all over them Giants. Joe Burrow almost 350 yards, two touchdowns, stupid interception. Wasn't his fault probably because he's the man. Held uh, the run game in check a little bit here with Joe Mixall. 21 carries for only 69 yards. I mean, yeah, I, you're not going to get 100. You want 69 rushing yards for sure. Aronde gets in the second. Just feeding the monster here. Undersized weight rise. But nine receptions, 132 yards. Jamar Chase has got his 90 in a touchdown. Romo Dunes, 57 in a touchdown with seven catches. Romo Dunes rise means the fall of Johnny Wilson. It's okay. Johnny, Johnny's there when you need him, baby. Jermaine Pratt, Logan Wilson, DJ Reader, Miles Murphy, and Trey Hendrickson all getting the sacks. No interceptions, though. Just absolute domination on the road by our Cincinnati Bengals. Minnesota Vikings pulling out a win here. Kirk Cousins. Three touchdowns. Austin Eckler, 1.8 yards a carry. That's awful. But he did get 6 for 41 in a uh, touchdown. Justin Jefferson is a beast. Three interceptions there for the Vikings defense. Jared Goff. He is as bad as 40-year-old Aaron Rodgers, unfortunately. I'm, I think this is his first 100-yard game for Amon Ross St. Brown. Yeah. I think it's got to be their playbook because they are just poopy on offense. Could it just be um, the quarterback? I'm not sure. but And as we predicted, the Baltimore Ravens would win this one. Lamar Jackson doesn't need to go over 200 yards passing when Elijah Mitchell and himself can do it on the ground. Jay Flowers, a big touchdown. Mark Andrews plotting along there. Defense doing what it has to do. Three interceptions on Mr. Deshaun Watson. Chubb. Should have gave the ball to Chubb more. That's what you got to do against a good defense like that. Sometimes just run the ball. David Njoku is the man. Just catching, catching, catching. But, you know, Miles Garrett's going to get his. So, good prediction there by us. This one, two franchise focus teams here. Battle of the Rookies, that's the storyline. And Jaden Daniels, the second overall pick, gets one over on the first overall pick. I mean, he did it all. Najee Harris, not getting it done. Keenan Allen, 10-100 for Chig Okonkwo. 
who has a dev game for week nine. Let's go. But the free agent acquisitions doing it and doing it well. Defensively, Jeffrey Simmons is the... Not, not going to spoil it. But it's just total domination. QB rating of 41.6. That's awful. J.K. Dobbins, I mean, to give him the ball more. He's one of the leading rushers for, in the league for a reason. Harrison Brown asked to fill in for an injured Cole Komet. Marvin Harrison returned. You know, you know just our defense. Was it more the defense or was it more the offense there? Josh White get a sack and uh, it's a sack in his debut. Good for them. Jermaine Edmonds having a really good year. He's got a bunch of picks and sacks. Uh, I mean, 6'5 linebacker. That's just crazy. But uh, I don't know. Was it more of uh, the Titans defense or was it more their offense? They're doing very well. And another franchise focus team here for us. The Washington Commanders. Justin Fields is starting to have a really good year after we got him out of that Phillies playbook. We've got him at and put him in that uh, Lions playbook. Not Lions. Oh my God, the Colts. For some reason, though, I get those teams teams always mixed up because they're just similar in colors and kind of the area of the country and both in domes. I don't know why. Whatever. But Justin Fields is doing well, and Jalen Warren in a revenge game, six point nine. 69 6.9 average yards a carry on 30 carries over 200 yards and two touchdowns justin fields another 78 almost 300 yards rushing but jalen warren with a revenge game how you doing jahan dotson is getting hot here with the touchdowns mclaurin steady eddie Gusecki, steady he also put in two picks but this guy, Xavier Worthless. You are worthless, 99 what? 99 suck. Yeah, the coffee's kicked in nice and well here. Danny Stutzman gets a sack. Cameron Curl with the pick. To Rick Forrest. That man's having a good year. Watch out. Kenny Pickett. Kenny picked off is what he is. Derrick Henry. I mean, he's no Jalen Warren, but 5.9 yards a carry. Good for them. Deontay Johnson, real life no longer there. Five five receptions for Derrick Henry. That's your problem. Thrown to a guy who's slower than... No, he's not slow. Big and slow. Minkin Fitzpatrick picking off the quarterback in the end zone. Could have been even higher scoring game. And then Indy getting blown out at home. Indy's had some tough home losses. Uh, two of them. They have two losses now, and uh, what's I mean? Why we look at the Colts versus the Bills one? But you know, getting the breaks beat off them by Josh Allen, four touchdowns, another twenty-six on the ground. Stephon Diggs, four touchdowns. That's probably good enough for Player of the Week offensively. Gabe Davis. Both these men are no longer here, but in this. The rookie coming through, Greg Rousseau, Ed Oliver, Shadavius White, absolutely smoking the league in interceptions. Rasul Douglas, great pickup for them. Cameron Johnson's really good too. Colts, man. Three picks for Anthony Richardson. Jonathan Taylor held in check. Jelani Woods. <laughs> I mean, he's had some big games, I think. I think it's his second or third big game with. Like, he either disappears to have big games, but 11 for 78, wow. Just, the receivers just don't do enough. So, anyway, that's that's for that game. Philly put up a fight? Question mark? Not really. Jalen Hurts, almost 300 yards, three touchdowns, but four interceptions. Come on, Jalen. I think Jalen's in on it for one of the top picks. A.J. Brown, his best game. I'm guessing Goddard got hurt. I I haven't watched this game intently enough. 
Nolan Smith Jr. now in the starting lineup. Getting two and a half sacks. Jordan Davis. Sidney Brown. Marquise Bell. Got to get these young guys built up. But like I said in the preview of this for last week. Packers got weapons, man. Aaron Jones, solid. Romeo Dubs. Two for 85 and one. Christian Watson. He's been on a nice touchdown streak, I believe. Sean Gary. Michael Carter. Jair Alexander is up there now in reception, uh, interceptions. So, Green Bay is now leading the division after this win, I believe. This was a shocker. I mean, this is one of those games. This happened in real life. You're like, eh. I think... Uh, I think the uh, NFL fixed this one to get all that betting money. Or Vegas fixed it. One of them. At home, Chiefs only score 10 points and lose to J.J. McCarthy and the Buccaneers who were on like a four-game losing streak. Get the hell out of here. Shaw White still getting it done. T.J. Tampa getting in the lineup, you know, that's a cool name. Tampa Bay's got TJ Tampa. That's, that's what I'm talking about. It's like we did that on purpose, but we did not do that. So that's a shocker if I've ever seen one. And then we predicted this. Tough spot here for the Dolphins. Brock Purdy getting it done. Christian McCaffrey, Brandon Ayuk, Debo, George Kittle. Just the usual spot suspects. Just feed their best players. Bosa, Chase Young. Yeah, I mean, dude didn't have his work. Yeah, this is what happened here. Look at this. Ten attempts for five yards. Absolutely shut down Devon A-Chain, who was on a really nice streak. Tavion Sanders got forced the ball because, look, Tyreek didn't. This is unbelievable. What a great job by the 49ers defense. So, but we, we kind of felt that one coming there. And then, what a great game. Overtime. Walk off. But let's talk about the Panthers first. Bryce Young, 362. Four touchdowns. Sanders with 11 yards of carry. Frank Gore, almost four yards of carry. Bryce Young, six yards of carry. I mean... This uh, run and shoot playbook doing well. Mingo ate y'all baby and scored two touchdowns. Hardman with 100 yards. Marshall's just Marshall's leading wide receiver in yardage. Up there in touchdowns as well. Jalen McMillan has been filling in nicely for an injured uh, Jermaine Burton. I mean, they didn't win, but they sort of put up the stats. Derek Brown, one of the leaders. Mari Barno, one of the leaders in sacks. He's having a great year, but let's talk about the winning team here. Two franchise-focused teams, one had a win. The Chargers are absolutely on fire. One of the best teams in the league, and it's pretty much because of Justin Herbert and Travion Henderson doing well, doing well. Mike Williams, Joshua Palmer is really getting into gear here. Quentin Johnson, Parham's in I think Stovar got hurt, and Parham did very nice. Another 6.9 yards uh, catch. Good for uh, 69 lovers. So, good win there and a bad loss at the same time. I hate when our franchise-focused teams play each other. It's really weird it says zero played. Is that because it went to overtime? Uh, And then this was a heartbreaker. Looked like we had a chance to pull this out here for our Cardinals. Kyler Murray's doing really well, but the offense isn't enough to uh, to get the wins. The defense, in my opinion, is playing pretty good. Actually, it's not. It's actually when I looked at the numbers, the defense was one of the worst. So we have to. I believe it's, a, it's the Cards. No, it's the Panthers' defense that's the worst. Yeah, it's the Panthers absolutely getting trashed. But offensively, Cardinals are one of the worst. So that's what it is. We got to fix that. 
yeah, like a last minute, last second walk off, not walk off, but no time remaining field goal win for the Seattle at home. And then the Rams absolutely bashing in the Jets, but we kind of knew this. Matthew Stafford, four touchdowns. Antonio Gibson, solid. Cooper Cup, cool. It, I don't know, what a better week. Cooper Cup or Stefan Diggs. Puka, nine for 50. Hopkins, Beckham, pick B. Getting the interceptions. I mean, Aaron Rodgers. So bad. So bad. He's killing them. Sorry, Jets. Great game here. Houston needed a win and they couldn't get it. Cowboys are really coming on strong here. Not the greatest numbers, but their defense is so good between Parsons and Demarcus Lawrence and Damone Clark and Stefan Gilmore, Travion Diggs, Trayvon Diggs. There's just a great defense. Stroud, better game, but just not good enough, man. Will Henderson. I mean, he's one of the best ends in, in the business. So that was, I believe, Sunday Night Football. And then the final game here, gross. We told you it was going to be gross. And it was. Three interceptions for Baker. Thought Jacob sucks. I mean, gross. Just so gross. And it tries coming on strong there. They got a bunch of pass rushers. Mac Jones, Mid Jones is what he is. Yeah, I wonder if having Javante back really hurt them offensively because Jaleel, Jaleel McLaughlin was, was having a nice year. Kool-Aid's coming on with some picks here. Look at that. Two Alabama starting corners. But they lost in the end. Let's look at the injury report here. Um, we're not going to do stats and stuff like that because we have that. It's We have the uh, mid-year um, review coming up. We'll do all the stats and everything like that. So we won't be doing that here. But let's look at the injuries as we go into week nine. Komet's still out. Brisker's still out. Now Santos is still out. Chase Brown's still out for the Bengals. Torrens is out. He'll be back soon. Broncos are healthy. Elijah Moore is still out. Buccaneers are healthy. Cardinals are healthy. Charges are healthy. Chiefs, missing a big one there. Thuney, Tooney, whatever his name is. Big one for the Colts, Braden Smith and Quiddy Pay. But he'll be back soon. Not great here for the uh, Commanders, but Bryce Huff will be back soon. Got Mitch Moore's. Cowboys rolling. They're healthy. Some key injuries here for the Dolphins. Eagles are finally healthy. Kyle Pitts should be back soon. Niners are missing Debo for a while and Chase Young. That's not good for them. But they got so much depth. Excuse me, Giants are healthy, but they suck. Jaguars are healthy. That's a bad one for the Jets, but Quinn Williams will be back soon. Lions, man, they are just so bad with injuries. Two big ones here on the offensive line for the Packers. That's hurting them, but they, uh, they're they in a, right there leading the division. Panthers, tough one here. Hubbard's still out. Uh, Ikem Iguanu. He's out for a while. Jermaine Burton will be back soon, but yeah, kind of have a plethora of wide receivers. You know, there's, even though there's four on a, t- on a time, but uh, Patriots are healthy. That's good. Raiders got big issues. Kyron Williams done for the year. 
Ooh, bunch here for the Ravens. Saints, Kamara's out still. We will Disley. Walker will be back soon. Charbonnet, he's done for the year. Wow. Wow. Huh. James Daniels. That's not good for them. Steelers. Uh, yeah, Texas are getting healthier, but that losing Kingsley, um, that hurts. Man, defense is doing really well. We still have stole without BJ Hill, so keep it going there. Titans, Vikings are healthy. All right, that's injuries. Let's jump to the awards here for week eight. We have Bryce Young getting the Offensive Player of the Week with four passing touchdowns, 362 yards. That's a great playbook. Jair Alexander, two interceptions and a touchdown. Stephon Diggs, 181 yards, nine receptions, four touchdowns. Got him in. And Will Anderson Jr. with three sacks. So those are the Week 8 Players of the Week. And they all get a plus three to their awareness if they're not maxed out at 99. Uh, Dev upgrades. Christian Barmar. Uh, has gone from a star and now a, from a star to a dev um, superstar. And then not on one of our focus teams, but Eli Gilman also got a star dev. So those are the devs upgrades I saw going forward uh, for week eight. Taking a, a quick pick, uh, peek at the schedule. A grand overview, as you can see here. Chargers, Chiefs, Patriots, Dolphins, um, now, there is one I want to talk about here. Uh, like, usually I take a, snap, a screenshot of the actual game. And there's one I didn't, and I'm going to talk about that. That's a Thursday night game. For some reason, I didn't snap that before it was played. Yeah, I'm doing this video kind of backwards. So, I know the re results. Well, at least I did. But uh, I've forgotten. The way I do things is really weird. But anyway... Uh, the Panthers are three and five against the uh, Bears, who have one loss. They're what three and four, I believe. But anyway, uh, two of our franchise focus teams face off on Thursday night, so that should be good. Bryce Young coming off, as you saw, Player of the Week uh, for the NFC. So uh, need a bounce back here for our Panthers. And then. The first 1 o'clock game is one of our franchise focus teams. It's the L.A. Chargers at the Kansas City Chiefs. Battle for first place. I think this is a tough spot for our Chargers, but it's a good test to see where they're at. They'll play the Chiefs again uh, later in the season, but this is a good test for us. Uh, right now, the Chargers have the best record in the NFL, and uh, let's see where we stand because the Chiefs have been on quite a roll here. And then we have another franchise-focused team taking on a division opponent. It's our New England Patriots taking on the Miami Dolphins down in Miami. Uh, this is a real tough spot for New England. They played Miami week one and lost. Uh, defensively, you know, I, I think we can keep kind of keep Miami at bay. But offensively, I just don't – we just can't get this Patriots team going uh, offensively. They have a championship-level defense, in my opinion, and – it's just a terrible offense. Boring game here, possibly. Jacksonville travels to New Jersey to face the New York Jets. I mean, is this just should this, this should just be a walk in the park here for Jacksonville? Uh, but you don't know. Um, but who wants to see? You know, no one really wants to watch a one and six team. Aaron Rodgers is underperforming. The Jets will be on the uh, market for a quarterback this coming off season and then great matchup here san francisco travels to buffalo buffalo uh coming off a win against the colts i'm i'm gonna give buffalo the edge here i think at home but this is a great game great matchup should it be a one o'clock game you know not a fan when the nfl does this but it is uh titans of the uh, nfl right now you know Team rating wise, uh, this is a great game. So uh, give me the Bills. And then we have division opponents here facing off in Dallas. I think this is a layup for Dallas. Dallas is just starting to roll here. They need a win to keep pace with the Commanders. I think um, when you go, when you see how the Commanders are playing, 
Uh, this sets up for uh, a must win for Dallas. And then uh, they're probably hoping to handle business the following week in week 10 against the Washington Commanders for first place. And then we have another franchise focused team here taking on a division opponent. Tennessee Titans at home against Houston Texans. What is happening to Houston? Is it all CJ Stroud? Who knows? But, um, you know, team rating wise, Houston has the edge. Tennessee is starting to play really well, I think, especially defensively. Uh, I think they could be better than a 500 club, and uh, let's see if they can handle business here. Uh, to me, this is a toss up, but, you know, I'm going to leave my team, team side in uh, Tennessee, towards Tennessee. And then we have the Vikings and Indianapolis here. Um, yeah, give, give me the Colts. <laughs> Not a Vikings fan. I just don't like this Vikings team. That's all I got to say about that, particularly. But um, Colts are rolling. They need to bounce back away after getting bashed by the Bills. So give me the Colts here. Uh, I think there's a good spot for the Ravens here. You know, even though they're on the road, uh, they need to keep pace with uh, the Browns and the Bengals. So, and they got to defend their Super Bowl title. Um, they won. They, you know, did they went that. I can't remember what the the Ravens did last week, but uh, you know, got to take the Ravens here with the. Uh, having the matchup in their favor. And then Washington Commanders travel to the 1-7 Eagles. I mean, the Eagles are checked out by now, hopefully. And the Commanders are really starting to roll here. Uh, they're 5-3. and three. they got to keep pace with the Cowboys. Uh, they win today. Cowboys win today. That sets up a huge matchup next week between the Commanders and and the Cowboys, so give me the Commanders over the Eagles. Sorry, my Eagles fans. I'm an Eagles fan too, so relax. Uh, battle of bad teams for first overall pick. Atlanta hasn't won since their first, that second game of the season. I think they won. I don't know, but five straight losses, I believe it is. So give me Denver here at home. Um. Yeah, Mac Jones, you know, they're looking to get this team rolling into next season. So I think Denver has more to play for. And then a franchise focus team, the Arizona Cardinals came off the bye and lost to Seattle, which should have been a layup. Now they have another division opponent on the road again, and they travel to L.A. to play the Rams. Um, the Rams are one of the best teams, I believe, against the run, which is not good for Arizona, which runs the ball. Uh, if Arizona's going to win, they're going to need to run the heck out of the ball. Uh, I mean, I think this leans to the Rams' side, but hey, uh, motivation's on Arizona's side, I think. And then, speaking of Seattle, uh, they take on Green Bay. This is Sunday Night Football. I, mean, I don't know what Se Seattle's going to do. Who are they? I mean, they have Sam Howell now, a quarterback. Does that give them any life? You know, maybe they have some hope here, but I'm going to lean Green Bay's side on this one. That division that Green Bay is in, the NFC North, it's kind of like, you know, 500 club. Like someone that gets the 10 wins, the first of 10 wins probably wins that, that division, maybe. But I think Seattle's far out of it. And then on Monday Night Football, speaking of another division where, you know, like nine, nine wins, 10 wins is going to win the division. Uh, you got New Orleans and Tampa Bay on Monday Night Football. Really, I think we need Tampa Bay to win as a Panthers uh, franchise-focused team fan because we we need these teams to kind of stay at 500 so when the Panthers start playing them and they start beating them, hopefully, uh, the Panthers can start making some ground on this division lead because they are not able to do that against uh, teams that aren't in the division. So let's take a sip of coffee here before we wind down and say goodbye. All right. Which games are you looking to forward to the most? Give me a prediction. Who do you think is going to have the biggest performance of week nine? Uh, who, who's, you know, I'm yet to hear anybody's favorite team so far, favorite player so far, you know, like Terrace Marshall, like, 
tearing up the league as the best wide receiver. Is he really the best wide receiver? Who knows? But uh, anyway, give me some comments. And I appreciate you guys watching. We'll see you next time uh, for the start of week nine. Take care.